Hello, today we're going to talk about aspect co-occurrence and how it can be used to discover interesting business insights. Just as a quick primer, what is aspect-based sentiment? Consider this text here. The coffee was really good, but I also liked the lighting. If we were to use document level sentiment, that is if we were just to consider the entire piece of text as one block, we would arrive at positive sentiment, which it is, but not much more insight than that. Positive about what? We haven't learned anything new. If I was doing this an, an analysis for a customer and they said, okay, but what do people like about my coffee shop or about my restaurant? I would have nothing else to say to them. Um, and so this form of sentiment analysis is is quite limited in its application. And here at Repustate, we're always trying to be as applicable as possible in, in the analysis that we create. So we try to drive our customers to do aspect-based sentiment. It gives us more details. So if we take that same input, coffee was really good, but I also liked the lighting, we would come up with coffee as being positive and we would classify it as being a drink or in the food aspect. Lighting is positive as well, uh, classified in ambience or atmosphere. And now I can say to my hypothetical customer, people like your food, they like your drinks, they like the ambience, they like the atmosphere. However, we've decided to, to model their text. But the point is it's much more applicable and insightful. And if if the sentiment was negative, you would know exactly which part of your service you need to improve, uh, which is obviously the whole point of doing something like sentiment analysis. Aspect co-occurrence is a little different. So it's taking aspect-based sentiment, so the aspects that we created in the previous slide, but we wanna say, do some aspects co-occur more often than others? Co-occurring means do they both, do two aspects always appear together in a review? And more importantly, do certain pairs occur more frequently than other pairs? So on a given data set, what we would do is we compute our aspects uh, as normal, but then we would compute the percentage or the probability that any two aspects appear together uh, in, in a given text block. So there's really a lot of useful applications why, of, of this technology and of this approach and why you want to compute this co-occurrence. Number one, obviously, is you can prioritize services and product development. So if I know certain areas that are, my customers seem to always be talking about, I know that's where I should focus. So if people are always talking about price and internet, for example, if I run a hotel chain, then I know that the price of the internet is kind of the key and that's where I need to focus on. Uh, it's really useful for doing automatic persona development. So if you're trying to come up with a marketing strategy and you look at your aspect co-occurrence of from historical reviews of say your hotel, you can say, okay, so for people who are really interested in spas, they're also really interested in the dining experience because those two aspects co-occur highly compared to others. So that's a persona that you could automatically uh, extract and, and um, profile and start to say, okay, how can we tailor our product? How can we tailor promotions to that person, the person who's looking for the spa and the uh, fine dining experience? You can do competitive analysis. So you can see how are your competitors, how are they doing uh, in, in compared to you in terms of aspect co-occurrence, which aspects seem to resonate with customers at your competitors, where are they doing better than you, where are you doing better than them, do you think that maybe you, you're, you view someone else as a competitor, but actually the aspects people talk about for your competitors are different, and so maybe the persona that you thought you were attracting is not really what you're attracting. So there's there's really no shortage of ways you can slice and dice the data and extract insights once you're able to view your aspects in relation to one another. So we're actually gonna do this today. We're gonna take 500,000 hotel reviews. Uh, Kaggle has a free data set in, uh, in CSV format. We're gonna take these reviews, we're gonna load it up into uh, Repustate's dashboard, which automatically helps visualize aspect co-occurrence. And then we're going to see if we can kind of identify some patterns um, that, uh, that could be useful in a business context. Here you see the aspect co-occurrence visualized for all those 500,000 reviews. 
you can see it's color coded like a heat map. So the darker the region, the higher the percentage. These are all the aspects that we classified uh, for this data set. Admittedly, some of these aspects are a little coarse. You could probably get more granular, particularly around amenities, uh, accommodations, um, food. But, uh, but it's a good starting point and uh, it'll serve us well uh, for this example. Now you'll see along the diagonal, of course, that's always going to be 100% because anytime you mention food, food gets mentioned. So the diagonal is always 100%. So that's not really that interesting to, to note. What's more interesting to note is kind of some of the things in the middle. So anytime somebody mentions attractions, they also mentions, mention the location 90% of the time. That makes sense. If you're talking about something uh, interesting to go and see and do, you probably also say, and the hotel is close to Disney and the hotel is a two minute walk from the Eiffel Tower. So that kind of makes sense as well. Some other things to note here. So staff, when people talk about staff, 72% of the time they talk about the amenities. So that might be uh, maybe at the spa, the, work, the spa staff do a great job. Um, it could be maybe about uh, at the pool, so the people who are working at the pool. So you see there's a high, uh, high correlation between, or high co-occurrence between staff at uh, amenities, staff and accommodations, and then kind of nowhere else, the numbers are quite, uh, quite low. So what I wanted to look at in particular for this data set is I separated it out uh, in terms of the whole data set. And then in another tab, I have just for the Hilton. So for any hotel, any Hilton hotel, uh, I, I filtered out the aspect co-occurrence just by uh, Hilton properties. Because I want to see if there's a difference between a higher end hotel uh, and kind of hotels in general. So there's something interesting that pops out. So this is the, again, this is the aspect co-occurrence for all hotels, high, uh, high budget, low budget, you know, all over the world. This is just for Hilton's and you can see it's different. Um, there's, you know, the certain areas that are dark colored or not dark colored and, and vice versa. So here's a, a couple interesting things I thought. Number one was cleanliness. There's not one mention of cleanliness in all these reviews for the Hilton. And, and I took a look, there's a few thousand Hiltons and not once does anyone mention cleanliness. And I was trying to think about why that would be. My guess is that people, when you, when you go to a high-end hotel, you just assume it's gonna be clean. So you don't even make note of the fact that the hotel was clean because that's kind of the baseline for a, you know, a four or five star hotel. And you compare it to the general population and you see people talk about cleanliness and not when they're describing uh, accommodations, when they're describing the amenities, when they describe the staff. So staff came to clean up the room or I had to order, a, I had to request someone to come clean this or that. So you see it in general across the whole population, cleanliness appears relatively frequently. It's well represented, but for Hilton, it's not. Another thing for trip style, no mentions of trip style. Trip style uh, it refers to people talking about who this hotel is good for. So if they said it's good for families, it's good for couples, it's good for uh, business, that's where we would classify trip style. And that's also interesting that nobody talks about that. Recommendations. Nobody says, I highly recommend this hotel, um, you know, I, or I don't recommend this hotel. Not one mention. And then compared to the general population, trip style, quite a few mentions, and recommendations, quite a few mentions. Again, I can only guess here without really looking into the data further. I would assume for recommendations, again, these are all good hotels and you just, you already know they're a good hotel. So recommending it doesn't really add anything. It's, it's just assumed it's going to be a good hotel. Uh, similarly for trip style, uh, maybe it's not obvious who this hotel is ideal for. Maybe it's good for everyone. Uh, you know, it's hard to say, but it's, I, I found that very interesting that for one specific hotel chain, uh, people speak differently compared to the general population. So you can do this sort of analysis for different hotel chains and compare them. You can do it within one hotel chain and go by location. So let's compare US based hotels to European ones. You can do it by tier. So for example, Marriott has uh, category one through category seven hotels. So you can compare to see how the aspect co-occurrence varies 
within each of those categories. So there's a lot of ways you can kind of dig into the data and, and arrive at some uh, insightful conclusions that can kind of help guide uh, future service, future expansion, future product development uh, for your hotel or, or whatever the product, you know, this, I focused on hotels here because it's um, easy to get data for, but this exercise works in all, uh, in all industries across all domains. You can do product reviews, consumer goods reviews. You can do voice of employee, voice of patient reviews with the exact same exercise. So aspect co-occurrence, it's really interesting. It's that next level of past aspect-based sentiment because now you're starting to paint a much richer picture. And the goal, again, like everything we do here, is to take sentiment and just use it as a means to an end because the whole point is to extract business insights. Uh, thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.